the way we kind of planned the, the, the evening today. Uh, I will briefly give a, a short introduction and, and feedback on, on your assignments, everyone, so that you can um, really see what was really the, the, the our impression me and Peja took um, a, a certain amount of time to carefully read all your, all your assignments and, and um, grade them. You have received individual feedbacks already and grades, but uh, as promised in every webinar, we will uh, first give a few uh, regard, uh, remarks and, and feedback, general feedback on your assignments, which gives you an opportunity then to, um, again, anyone interested in uh, you know making changes in order to uh, improve their assignments are more than welcome to do so. I'll share my presentation first, just shortly. I will not take too much uh, time. Uh, because uh, I think it's it's very kind of valuable and important to leave uh, enough time for the uh, for our presentation that Melika will have uh, this evening, uh, and uh, then after that I will give the floor to you, Melika. Of course, uh, let me just try to to find and share my my presentation. Uh, it's like today. The net the, the computer is not my best friend, obviously. Uh, but I'll try. I'll do my best. Uh, so you know, you know how they say that that sometimes PhD in terms of this uh, practical skills in in IT means push here dummy. So I'm that kind of a person. <laughs> uh, at least this evening, uh, I did my best to push the buttons that. We were instructed to do uh, by Darko, which is our valuable asset to this webinar. So I guess you can you can see my my presentation. Yes. I will give a brief introduction in uh, and brief overview of your of your paper of your assignments and your papers. Give the word to Malika, of course, afterwards. And in the end, we will give instructions instructions for the for the third part of the assignment. Just for the stake of like general impression. Again, I'm very happy that most of you have been very punctual with the assignments and, and most of you just gave, uh, you know submitted them before the deadline, the Monday deadline, this one extended deadline, in spite of holidays in all these uh, in all these uh, preparations, you were very punctual and that helped and gave enough time to Pej and me to um, read carefully your assignments. Uh, it was great to see that there were there were groups who which were very ready and happy to make changes and corrections in their first assignments. Um, I, I already wrote to all of you in, in your individual um, feedback that this was re very important, not for the sake of of grades specifically, but for the, the for the with the purpose of you know learning by doing and improving things uh, in coordination with with the, the two of us with Peja and me and and learning by improving uh, step by step. So and again, thank you for the honesty in self evaluation. I like to read your uh, self evaluations, although. It's something that Dayan does as well, uh, and I think uh, we should take into consideration your comments in self-evaluation as well. I, I'm very happy that most of the teams work well and, and, and are very well um, in, in the teamwork, which is also an important part of, of this, this whole program, this whole, uh, this whole concept, because we kind of Besides, you know, uh, providing with some knowledge, skills, speakers, materials, I think that usually the most valuable asset is the people that you meet and that you work with. And um, now to go into details regarding your assignment, most of you actually did well in deciding on the target audience. Uh, which is important because that shows that you understand well what the primary and what the secondary target audience is. And it also shows that you uh, that's also something that I find personally quite important that you uh, managed well to continue on what you have already planned in the first part of the assignment. So kind of those who already improve, who already had a very good first assignment just continued working on the, the second phase of the project. Those who had uh, some improvements uh, needed, uh, they, they had a, quite some difficulties, of course, in first correcting the first assignment and then continuing working on it, but you did very well 
with both of that. Uh, I will just briefly say two more remarks. One is related to goals and the other one to key messages. And again, I'm very grateful to uh, my colleague Peja for kind of putting it all together in a very uh, kind of easily understandable way. Uh, my uh, kind of uh, the, the thing with the goals and with the, the, the smart concept was actually that um, in some cases, I wouldn't say most, but some cases, some groups actually tried to uh, kind of invent uh, as many goals as needed in order to kind of uh, fulfill each and every criteria of the SMART. So that there is a goal which is sustainable, then there is another goal which is achievable, then there is another goal. So for every aspect of the SMART, actually acronym, there was a, a specific goal. But the idea in, in general in communication and social marketing campaigns is that the SMART goal is basically consists of one sentence, of one goal which is very, which is then SMART itself. So it's, there is no need to have like, uh, I don't know, five different goals uh, for uh, for every element of SMART, uh, for primary uh, target group, then five different goals for secondary target group. One goal should be SMART, to put things simple, or to put it in a simple terms. Uh, and again, smart goals do not need additional explanations. Uh, yeah, they all. Yeah, actually, it's it's kind of uh, the, the the comment that, that Natasha has that all of them that are falling under one umbrella goal. That's true, but uh, in in uh, general, the idea is actually to be very. Uh, uh, very kind of uh, to 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 put it simple to make it simple somehow. There is no need to for details explanations uh, of how you will achieve the goal, why you will uh, you decided that that should be the goal, and so on. So uh, I, most of our comments regarding goals were actually put it uh, make it more simple, make it smart, and then make it. Uh, you know, very easy to understand uh, general because then it's easier to achieve it. Actually, it's easier to measure it afterwards. It's easier. It's easier for you afterwards for the third and fourth part of the assignment. You will see. The second our suggestion or our comment again. Thank you, Peja, for helping me to put it in the in the simple words. The the key messages. Uh, I kind of think that um, that might be the the the. the the case because we didn't explain it well, but the key messages are not slogans or are not. It is very rarely possible to formulate them as slogans. It's OK if they are slogans, but these slogans actually um, should uh, consist of something that should easily make target audience understand what are the benefits of socially desirable behavior and the costs of socially undesirable behavior. So it's very, uh, you know, uh, important that the key message invites to an action and explains what are the benefits of the an action, of an action and of the change of the behavior in comparison to costs if the behavior as such is not changed. Again, we are talking, we're going back to what we talked um, about in the previous webinars. The main thing is actually in a social marketing campaign to change the, the, the behavior of the, the, the audience and, and so on. So um, this is very, uh, very important to kind of understand because that is something. So for example, we had a lot of key messages saying like uh, put in like two words, do things differently, which is great. I mean, I don't know, use less plastic. That's great. But basically, the, the, and that's a great slogan and it, it can be very helpful, but it's not it, it it's not considered a key, a key message. Uh, so basically, uh, these are kind of two main main points or two main explanations or clarifications that we need wanted to give you in uh, with regards to your your second assignments. Again, you have a, an opportunity to to improve your second assignments uh, if you feel like it. Uh, again, for not for the sake of grades, but for the sake of learning and improving. 
uh, that's up to you, of course. We are very open to, um, again, read again your, your assignments, your second assignment, in or if you decide to improve it. Uh, I will stop here and then uh, I will uh, leave my second part of presentation, which will show and explain the third assignment later on. Uh, I think it is important uh, to kind of uh, understand uh, understand uh, the, the, the third assignment well. So please do feel free to ask any questions at this very moment that you you might have. Uh, and of course, ask anything you feel uh, not, was not clarified uh, on our forum throughout the week. Peja and I are uh, open to answer all of your questions. Uh, I will stop here with the, the, the feedback and with great pleasure and with great gratitude to my dear colleague Melika Husic Mehmedovic, who would like to, pre uh, to present her to you. Uh, she's a full time professor at the Department of, of Marketing, Faculty of Economy, University of Sarajevo, very well experienced in uh, the field of. Uh, marketing, and I think it's a, it's a, she's a very a valuable guest speaker this evening, uh, and I'm very uh, happy that she expect, accepted my invitation to talk to you today. Uh, today, because I'm I'm um, sure you will have a lot uh, to hear from her. I'll give the word to you, Malika. Uh, I will follow the chat, and you you all feel free to uh, ask questions even during Malika's presentation if there are people who are um, actually um, here in in this um, uh, online classroom um, and then can can use the microphones as well, feel free to do so. So basically, but I will follow the chat just to ask to kind of send uh, send the questions. Um, yeah, so uh, just before uh, before I give the floor to Malika, let me um, re respond to Maria's question. Yes, you can revise the mistakes in the assignments by the end of it. Uh, so we, since you'll learn as you go and we'll go back to it and, and then again revise it. So Malika, I'll give the word to you. Thank you uh, very much again for accepting our invitation and the floor is yours. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me, Leila. Thank you, Peja. Uh, it's it's great to be here or <laughs> wherever you are. Actually, where are you? Where is everyone coming from? Can I see some chat? I would like to try to, to have this as uh, interactive as possible. So maybe we can have small icebreaker, like where do you come from? OK, Skopje, Ljubljana, Belgrade. Lovely. Hello from rainy Sarajevo, Novi Sad, Kumanovo. Excellent. I'm so glad to hear, to see, oh, Brussels. And then suddenly we move away. Bosnian in Moldova. Okay. I have a good friend, Moldovian in Bosnia, Albania. Good. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I hope that we will have fun. Uh, uh, good, good luck, Dobrila, with traveling. I hope it's not raining on, a way, on your way there. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize for small uh, technical inconvenient, inconven inconvenience, and I hope that that will be the only one, because I will try to open my presentation now, hopefully it will work, or not, or not. And again, Windows, there it is. Okay, now can you see my presentation? Yep. Excellent. However, I cannot see chat anymore, so I will need your help with that. I will assist, assist no worries. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, yes, today we will be talking about uh, communication campaigns for social change, as that is your main topic. But from what I saw, uh, just or heard from... interrupt you. Uh, have you maybe uh, shared the presentation on full screen or...? Yes, on a full screen. Okay, I, I guess that the presentation is... I guess that maybe you have shared the window. Uh, yes. I'll try to, to share a presentation, uh, yes. the what presentation you for you. To and share. then, uh, so please take control when the presentation is uh, uploaded, okay? Okay, do you want me not to share the window or something else? So oh. you'll see the presentation right now and you should be able to have... I did take a control, okay. Oh, so that's great. 
Okay, excellent. Now I see chat and I see everything. I did uh, have some last minute changes and updates, but we can skip them. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll be okay without them. Uh, keep keeping uh, my fingers crossed that everything will work as it is. Uh, so, as Leila introduced me, I'm a marketing professor at School of Economics and Business in Sarajevo, uh, and uh, my specialty is consumer behavior, something that we will touch upon today. But as I said, there are many things, as I can see, that you have already kind of covered um, uh, the whole concept of marketing uh, or the communication process and um, uh, at least several first steps that uh, I will kind of put in the outline, overall outline. Are there any marketing majors or marketing specialists among you? No response, so I'm guessing not. Um, what we will try to uh, cover today. Oh, yes, there are some. Sandra, thank you. So help me out. Um, we will uh, go through the communication process because it's good to have the overall outline in which we will focus each element then and elaborate a little bit more. Uh, of course, throughout the presentation, we will use your examples of environmental issues and environmental campaigns. Uh, but most of the time, it's, uh, yeah, most of the presentation, I will be talking about communication tactics, techniques and tools or different elements of communication mix. Usually, unfortunately, uh, we kind of, we, we, we um, when we say marketing, uh, we think of communication, which is not the case. So communication is only the tip of the iceberg uh, of the entire marketing as a discipline. Marketing covers uh, marketing research, creating, uh, prod uh, creating product, price, place, and promotion. You must know that that is marketing mix or four Ps, famous four Ps, and only one of them being promotion or communication. Yes, it's true that all other elements of marketing mix, product, price, and place also communicate in some way. Uh, but we usually say, we usually, when we think of marketing, we think just about communication. And it is really one small portion of the entire marketing. Nevertheless, it's the only visible thing. It's the only thing that we can see. So that is why we unfortunately kind of uh, put that in the uh, same uh, correlation. But correlation is, but uh, communication is this. Communication is this. Uh, communication is, do you see only my presentation or some, uh, um, do you see only my slide or some text as well? Leila. Slides. Yeah. Just slide. Thank you. Um, so what is com communication is this? I'm sure that you have all seen this. It's been the huge buzz and fuzz about it. Sometimes I was thinking this morning, uh, was it December or January? I'd say December. Um, the misfortunate or unfortunate communication by Balenciaga. Uh, they try to have just another communication campaign. They try to be different. They try to differentiate. As you have heard many times in marketing and communication, we have to be different. We have to stand out in order to be noticed. And that is true. But sometimes we stand out too much. We go too far and then we exaggerate and get ourselves in a situation from which it's difficult to come back. I believe, I personally believe that this uh, communication campaign will hurt Balenciaga for good. And although they did apologize, they did um, fire the communication director uh, they still, uh, not still, they will uh, have uh, severe troubles through with their main brand because of the miscommunication. Uh, so when talking about communication, you always have to be alert because you are a medium. We are all mediums now and it's easy to make a mistake and it's easy to, and then it's not easy to go back. So it's easy to make, make a mistake and uh, when communicate, uh, always have, have in mind that this is powerful tool that you can use for greater good, but also you can 
um, mess it up really bad. And um, it's different to, to come back. Uh, with communication, with marketing communication, we try to inform, pursue, and remind. I wouldn't say consumers, but stakeholders. Mladen, I'm sorry I don't see my you don't see my presentation, but I cannot touch anything. <laughs> um, so um, the rest of us do see. I guess most of the people do see it. Yeah. Is anyone else having a problem as Mladen? I guess not. Okay, for some is stuck, for some don't they don't see, and majority does see. Okay, if Darko can help us, great. If not, I will just move on. Um, so it's uh, it's to inform, pursue, and remind uh, stakeholders, so all the interest groups, about our product, idea, brand. When we say product and when I say product, we usually think of a larger concept, not just table and chair, the whole idea, um, uh, the whole um, services as well, destinations, people, um, uh, and so on. Uh, so we are trying to communicate the information or to persuade someone to use our to, to, to do some, to have some action or to remind them. And uh, that is, this is um, rooted in your um, objects that you were just, objectives that you were just uh, mentioning, and we will come to that in a moment. This is the basic communication process that you have all seen, uh, at least in high school. So in, I, I believe in every social science, we go through the communication process, and yes, there is a sender, and yes, there is a receiver, and yes, there is a message in the middle. And there is a coding, a decoding, and there is a noise and noise and feedback and so on. But something has happened in the past, I would say, five to ten years that changed the communication uh, process for good. And that is, of course, social media. Uh, social media have changed the whole idea of communication. I usually uh, cover this from the side of marketing. As marketing did change, uh, did change in its final outcomes. We changed the way how we communicate. We changed the uh, medium media that we communicate through, um, and that is because we we now have communication receiver to receiver. So it's not only what I, as an organization, want to communicate to you, but you communicate among each other. And this is the noise for me as an organization that I cannot control. So you are communicating among yourselves and I cannot interfere that. That is why you trust your friends for the recommendations. You trust your um, people you don't know and their um, objective recommendations uh, and their opinion and their likes and dislikes. And this is uh, something that influences uh, the communication process greatly. So now we have uh, a total individualization of the process. Now the process, how to communicate, how to develop communication campaign. There are some stages and some of them obviously you have covered and it's always too good. My, my uh, advice would always be uh, have this bigger picture or have the structure in your mind throughout the process. Knowing where you stand in a process will uh, make it easy for you to know your next step. And after, if you are stuck with communication or the marketing, um, just think uh, or have uh, your mind on consistency. Uh, at the end, your communication campaign has to be consistent from the very beginning, from the objective you set uh, up to the final outcome. What does it mean? We will go through that in a moment. So first, um, th there are many steps. And as every um, profession has their own language, we in marketing love acronyms. So whatever we can put in several letters, we will put it in several letters uh, or in some kind of diagram. 
In this case, we start with objectives. And you have already heard that objectives are smart. We will touch that on our next slide. Uh, so we start with objectives. The second thing that unfortunately, even the biggest professionals uh, care to neglect is identifying your audience. So you have to know who is that you are communicating with, who is your audience, because your overall strategy, tactics, message, media will be different. It's totally different if you are uh, trying to appeal to um, elementary school kids from, let's say, 10 to 15, uh, that they should take care of where they put their put away their garbage, that they should pick after themselves, and so on. Or if you are communicating to retired people and you want them to uh, save energy and save water and so on. So it's completely different tone, it's a different message, and it's different media. So you have to know your audience because it's not the same who is that you are communicating with. Then you go into creating your message, uh, the thing that I just heard Leila saying, so your overall, your key message. What is that you want to communicate? What is uh, uh, the, the, the message that you want to send uh, that corresponds to your objective? Um, after that, we pick the media, depending on who is our audience, what is going to be our uh, basic media. Uh, finally, we develop some creative approach or creative idea, and that is when the when this slogan or um, some designer uh, comes in a picture. Uh, and finally, we measure performance, that boring thing that we kind of neglect. Uh, but if we don't measure, we will have we will have no idea. Did we accomplish what we wanted to do? Um, uh, I will not talk about measurement. I know that you have that in one of the other webinars, uh, but uh, uh, bear in mind, there is something fairly new called Barcelona principles of measuring ad campaigns, uh, which is actually now measuring the impact. Usually we measure campaign, how many clicks, how, what is the reach, what is the frequency, but what is the real impact? Did anyone change their behavior? And I think this is uh, important to have in mind, uh, especially in this environmental issues and the topics that you are uh, working with. So uh, Barcelona principles for measuring campaigns are important because you will not know if you have or have not changed someone's attitudes. Did I really start saving an energy or I will leave everything on now that I um, leave this computer lab and everything will be on until morning? Uh, please, when you have a question, uh, ask the question in a chat. But Leila, then I will ask you to just read out the question whenever it pops up, because maybe they are asking it uh, something to, while we are on a specific slide or something like that. We'll do immediately. We have a question. Could you please refer in more details and, exam uh, and examples to the difference between key message and slogan? That's probably the weakest yes. point uh, key, in the yeah. assignments as well. Okay. Key message is this third step, creating, crafting or creating the message. What is that I want to say? That's like when you are writing something and what is your goal? What, um, what do you want to accomplish with this communication campaign? Whereas slogan is a catchy line, is just a creative uh, design. It's, uh, it's a few words, but creating a message is what is that I want to communicate and message can have, can be more words, more pictures, more elaboration on what, it, what is it that you are actually doing, your main tactics. So after... Um, knowing what you want to do, to whom you are communicated, communicating, uh, you will say, okay, I will do, um, my, my, I will create my message through advertising, and this will be my ad, or I will create my message through public relations, I will create event, and this will be my message for this event. But then at the end, you will have some creative outline in which you will say, save the nature, save the snails, save the whales, and so on. 
So first thing is setting, set, setting the objectives. As you saw, they are smart. They have to be smart in one, uh, in one goal in, or in one objective. Uh, so um, I, I saw excellent example uh, presented to you but by, by uh, Professor Leila. Uh, but the thing is that uh, my goal is not to increase sales. My goal is to increase the sales of product X for 20% in the next six months on the market of this region. So I have as many details because then I can measure it. Increase sales, when, what, how, where, to whom. That's, so that's my maybe overall strategy, uh, but uh, my goals have to be specific. In communication, as I said at the beginning, uh, through definition, there are um, uh, three main goals to inform, to pursue, and to remind. I want to inform you that I exist. I want to pursue you to, to act what I want. I, I'm, I'm calling you for action. And not all communication messages are called for action. Or I'm just reminding you, just, just so you know, if you want to save the planet, you can contact my organization. Just reminding you that I still exist. Uh, so through uh, through our goals, communication goals, we create awareness. And usually in environmental campaigns or in any social change campaigns, we create awareness that problem exists, that we are suffocating in the garbage. Or uh, I remember watching long ago, years ago, uh, a video uh, of the problem, how do we dispose the monitors, monitors of computers, the TVs, and it, when they were when they were not flat but wide, thick, big boxes, and then uh, the video showed these huge mountains of monitors and uh, that cannot be destroyed in any way. They cannot be uh, uh, burned. They cannot be, uh, you know digged in a, in a, in a, in a earth, they, they, they couldn't do anything with that. So that, that, that created me the awareness that this might be a problem. Or now I'm creating awareness that what, what um, the car industry, what are they going to do with those huge batteries? We are now moving into electric cars and we are trying to save the planet by um, not creating more pollution through gas emission. However, uh, when we change the car, what are they going to do with those huge batteries? I wonder, and I know that they wonder, or some of the um, uh, car dealers are putting a big emphasis on that. So this is creating awareness, letting me know that this problem exists. And now I will start thinking that this might be an issue. Or building preferences. Uh, say the animals so animal uh so there is a green planet there is a green food or uh reduce carbon uh emission or save animals or so what is what is my preference where you can see me and finally initiating action so this is uh the the um the messages that at the end have a call for action do that call this number for your support uh, come to this event to support. Uh, donate here to support. Uh, this is call for action. But again, not all messages have a, a call for action. And finally, always think about consistency. So you cannot have all of this in one message. You can have all of this in one campaign. But one message is for creating awareness. The other message is for building the preferences. And one is for... Uh, uh, initiating action. It cannot be all in one because uh, then nothing will stand out. Okay. Next thing, as I said, is identifying target audience. So now I have my goals. I know what to do. I now have to know who is that I'm communicating to. Who am I talking to? And um, that is my, my, my personal preference. This is what I teach, the consumer behavior or analyzing consumers. And this is so neglected that I really would like to kind of 
uh, raise your attention uh, to this topic. You will not know how to create a campaign if you don't have someone that you are actually talking to. So this is a basic profile. The first photo that I took from internet yesterday, but I will on the next picture, I will show you some um, already prepared um, consumer profile or customer profile or stakeholder profile, doesn't matter. So interest group profile. There is a demographics, age, income, geographics, location, demographics again, turnover and so on. But there are also psychographic and lifestyle dimensions such as goals, challenges, uh, but also your hobbies, your activities, uh, your media preferences, and so on. And um, it's a small thing, but whatever is your assignment, I would strongly advise you to include something like this in your uh, uh, overall communication campaign, because then you will know who you are communicating to. Um, I usually think of a person, I imagine a person, I spend a significant amount of time browsing for pictures on internet that will really portray well someone that I'm uh, creating this campaign to. I give them names, I just create the real people. And then from then on, I am not communicating to everyone. I'm communicating to that particular person that I invented. And it's so much easier because you easily correlate with that imaginary person. Uh, let me give you the example of, this was a cosmetic industry and this was um, American market and the company was entering. So we created uh, two, um, uh, two profiles. Um, and they are called Emma and Sam. We gave them names. We, we, we gave them horoscope sign and when the date of birth and um, uh, we kind of explain their personality and what is that they do and what kind of advertising they like and what kind of look they prefer. And now I know I will not try to push uh, shabby chic to them through Instagram. That's not their thing. They want something completely different. They like alchemy and they like discovery and they want the spark and so on. So um, when you create your audience, it's easier to communicate with that specific target group. Please take my advice and um, for future reference, when you do campaigns and communication, uh, have particular person in your mind. Now this message. Message can have the, the two main groups, can be informational or transformational, especially in this area of social marketing. Do I want to inform, as I said, that there are there is a question, an issue, and a problem of monitors being disposed? Do I just want to inform you? Or do I want to transform your appeal? Do I want to transform your uh, behavior? I want you to be afraid that those uh, monitors will suffocate us at one point, and you will start thinking before disposing your monitor next time. So do I want you to do something? Or do I just want to inform you? This is uh, my 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 message. Uh, usually, when when I when I try to think of creating it, uh, what is uh, going back to objectives and going back to being consistent. It all has to speak in the same voice. It all it all has to be uh, consistent and correlated with one another. Uh, I will try to ask you if this is informational or transformational. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the videos will work.
So what do you think? Transformational? Informational. I knew that this will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Layla, At least two, so you know, different approaches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this was scary for me, you know. Uh, once I saw it, I was thinking how I'm eating a hanger, and, you know, having a snack of a credit card. It's really uh, uh, an issue. I, it's a tricky one. Uh, Azra was corrected the first time uh, at, the, at the beginning. It was informational. It scared us. Uh, but then at the, in the second part, it said it, it had a call for action. So it's a tricky one. It started as informational, then it moved into transformational. Uh, I think it ended up again as informational, just so you know that this is what's happening. There is no, at the end, call for action, like stop eating plastic. <laughs> Don't eat your credit cards anymore and so on. Uh, yes, yes, it's it's most of the time it's it's informational, but it's um, it, it makes you think or wonder. Okay, um, now this is the process. Now we came to tools. Again, we are still creating a message. Now the message uh, can go through something that we call um, integrated uh, marketing communication. Integrated marketing communication has five main, main elements, and we will move up um, to that, and that will be our discussion for the rest of uh, this evening. Uh, but before we do that, there will be another video. Uh, however, it's always the mix that we are using. So it depends, again, my students know the, the, uh, the only correct answer in marketing is it depends. Everything depends, depends on your objective, depends on your environment, depends on your audience, depends on your budget, depends on your uh, skills to create a uh, creative campaign. So it depends on a variety of issues. Uh, but uh, at the end, you have those five elements of promotion of or integrated marketing communication, and you pick them creating their fruit and you are creating your fruit salad. Uh, so for a certain objective, it's better to use PR and lobbying. For another one, it's better to use mass communication or advertising through social media. For another one, it's best to have personal or direct communication, direct marketing and personal communication. So it depends. But you, ha you, can, you have no idea what will work for you, your objectives and your audience unless you know what, what are the differences, what are the advantages and, and disadvantages of each. And that will be our uh, goal. Um, and now let's try to see how through a funny cartoon video, uh, uh, how they explain very well what integrated communication is and what are those elements.
that's basically it. So we put everything together, all elements that we have, and try to create experience for our and try to create experience for our consumer. We will come to experience. So this is our marketing communication mix. It's advertising, sales promotion, direct marketing, public relations, and personal selling. And uh, we will go briefly through all of them, spending on some of them more time because they are more important for um, uh, social uh, campaigns. First one is advertising. Basically, it's any presentation or promotion uh, that has that goes through paid media. Usually, we say that this is mass media and that we pay for that media because there is another element of, uh, uh, of marketing mix, of promotional mix, uh, that also uses mass media that is not paid directly. That is public relations. So difference between advertising, it uses paid media. For example, if I pay my media, I buy, I literally buy seconds, I buy space, I buy um, space on a, on, a, on, a, on web or a space in, in a paper previous or billboard, and I can put whatever I want. I can put uh, my photo on a billboard and say Melika is the best. I can, I paid for it. Uh, so this is advertising, and we pay a great deal of money. Uh, advertising is, uh, in your total budget, the most expensive way of communication, but also it has many advantages uh, that created the cheapest for uh, per one contacted unit. So there are plenty of uh, pros and cons of, of uh, advertising. Um, and as I said, it uses um, mass media. And I will start with traditional media. But this is maybe a good point to say, so what about uh, internet? What about new media? What about social media? As you can see here, there is no social media here, or there is no internet as a specific mark on my star. And I wonder why. For some period of time, we thought that uh, new media uh, will become, will have another box. We will have six boxes from now on, and one of them will be digital marketing, new media, social media, or whatever. <clears throat> but then we realized that's not happening. New media or digital media is just an add-on in each of these elements of the star. So don't forget, there is no such a thing as digital um, communica digital communication as how, how would I say, as a category. But digital communication is part of advertising, is part of PR, is part of direct marketing is part of every other element. So it's just another media that actually added on and incorporated in each of those elements. It's not a self-standing per se uh, category. Have that in mind because you will often hear it uh, uh, the, wrong, the, the wrong way. Uh, let's start with traditional uh, media, TV, it has um advantages that uh it's vivid it combines picture motion picture and uh, a sound it can um uh, cover a big audience big auditorium uh, on the other side it's very expensive nevertheless i wonder how many of you um I, 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 uh, I'm glad that I can come back to your question, even though I'm not sure that I understand it. Um, so I um, am not, uh, uh, if I would ask you now, how many of you actually watch TV? I'm sure not many. Maybe Netflix, maybe finding something interesting on YouTube, but when is the last time that you actually uh, uh, turn on a TV and just browse through the channels? like not happening. 
Um, however, depending again on your target target audience, if you are targeted older targeting older audience, then in this entire region, just UK media, you are coming from uh, TV is still very influential medium. So it depends on your target audience. Um, print advertising, print advertising is passive but it still hasn't died. I think that the worst future now I can say for, uh, that TV has than print. Because, because again, print move into another uh, version of print. Now you are not maybe uh, uh, reading the newspapers, but you're reading it on a website. You are reading all papers the same um, way on, on, on their web and in their online form. But uh, there is something really great that will not die, and that's magazines. Magazines, they have good quality photos. They last a month. I'm now thinking, where am I going to go over the 1st May? Um, probably on a coast. And, and already thinking what magazines I'm going to bring, and they will last for... Uh, they will wait for me when I come over for a vacation, I'm pretty sure, because magazines last and they have a good quality um, text uh, that can be, uh, that, that, can, that are tailored made for your personal interests. Uh, radio advertising, also one uh, neglected form of advertising, which is great. Uh, it's very passive. We listen to radio when we drive, when we are on a work, when we are. It, it doesn't require any action from us. It's just there in the background and it's pretty cheap. And you are not aware how influential it is. So radio is a good thing, good for jingles, good for uh, good, good messages. Um, so don't neglect radio. And then we move into this uh, online uh, advertising that has of course, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, well, many advantages are that is one-on-one. Um, -on -one. It's really tailored made. Uh, you and I have, we don't have the same uh, cookies. We don't have the same preferences on a phone. We don't have, if we, if we all, all 40 of us um, would have the same cell phone, we have, definitely all different uh, apps. Uh, so it's really tailored made and each one of us will get different uh, communication messages and ads will appear uh, differently in a different time spans and so on. But the problem is that you heard in this video, it's really our attention span is we say as a goldfish, especially in younger generations. Uh, uh, the goal, if you have a goldfish, that's why we call it the attention of a goldfish. If you have a goldfish and you tap on its aquarium, it will come over to see what's going on and you can keep their attention for six seconds, literally six seconds, and then it's gone. And the same is now, especially with Gen Z, uh, we say they have a special, they have attention span of a slide. When I slide you on my phone, you are done. I'm never coming back. I'll never find you again. So I slide you. And you, you have this seconds, six seconds to actually get in my mind, to get my attention so that I can focus on you and actually maybe remember what is your main message. Some new things now to, to kind of reach to those, especially Gen Zs and new generation, is something called native advertising. I don't know if you have heard of it, but native advertising is um, advertising in your native surrounding or in everyone's native surrounding. So for example, if you wanna reach my kids, you can reach them in Minecraft. That's about it. Uh, so what do you need to do? You need to put your ad in a Minecraft. You need to put your ad on uh, Roblox or wherever you can find your audience. If I'm not interested in Minecraft and I watch, I don't know, whatever, I, 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 um, I'm browsing, uh, I like Twitter, then you can find me on Twitter. 
and so on. So you have to know not only medium, but you have to find me in my, in my natural surrounding. And you, you, you cannot tell me buy my product or act like this. Just place it somewhere so I can see it. And that's it. I don't want pushy commercials anymore. Um, there is also place uh, advertising, like uh, placing actually something on a, on a, on a, uh, on my area of interest, um, and putting it. It has to be subtle now. It has to be smooth. It does. It cannot say just buy my product. No, not wait a minute. So social media, um, social media. Social media, we think they are easy and we think they are cheap. And it's true, they are cheaper than traditional media, but not free. And if you want to have a good campaign in all social media, you have to spend significant amount of money. Again, it depends um, what is preferable medium for a specific generation. So your generation is probably heavy on Instagram. My generation is heavy on Facebook. Um, who is now tweeting and who is not and where is who is on a TikTok. Um, so social media is uh, uh, depends again on your on your preferences and on your uh, demographics. But also social media is not just pushing your messages. It's a communication. It's a two way process. I feel very frustrated when I uh, send some reply to whatever organization, company, product, institution. I expect them to answer to my request. If I post it on social media, if I tag them in social media, I expect their response to me personally. Uh, so this is a two-way communication process and that is what's good about it. it that is what it makes it individualized but i cannot have it as just it's not a tv have that in mind and again choosing your best way of communication youtube is very popular but can you guess which social media is really rising very fast can you take a wild guess? Uh, no, TikTok is, they, 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 Peja, they, um, they blocked it in many countries in US, definitely, like in Denmark, in all public institutions, I think in Sweden as well. So TikTok is in a problem now. No, it's not a be real. I don't even know that one. Globally, as a globally. Uh, the, the, the social media. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Bravo, Azra. Um, so uh, the, 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 the social network that has the most progressive uh, rise right now is LinkedIn. And uh, it's not as heavy here in professional community, but it will be. So pay attention to LinkedIn, uh, build up your profiles uh, because it, Daniel, because it's very professional. It's you need to create content. You cannot post your photo and say, look, this is me eating ice cream. Uh, you have to offer me something worth reading so I can actually spend some uh, minutes in reading your uh, your post. You have to learn me, teach me something. I have to learn something from your post and not just see, uh, uh, good, good for you, Azra, and not just to see uh, what's going on. So uh, build up your LinkedIn profiles. That would be definitely my uh, advice to you. Mobile communication, also very good. Uh, uh, Mladen, it's not boring it's also uh, great it's the biggest database of cvs so right now when i uh, am searching for someone and when i looking for a collaboration the first thing i do is actually find them on linkedin see what they do and yes once you get used to it you, you kind of really like it 
Um, maybe, okay. maybe Malika, if I can just uh, jump in for for a second, I think that with the, with for example this um, idea that uh, for example LinkedIn is boring, we have the same mistake that people usually make with for example um, talking about TV programs, documentaries, and so on, like assuming that if they are serious and you know not like fun related that they are boring. But it's a it's a you know that's a trap that we should not kind of get into that the high quality content is necessarily boring so i might i think that might help in kind of solving that mystery that tiktok is fun and great and linkedin is like crazy boring thing well, again uh yes but again those media they will all have to adjust to new generations so tiktok is popular uh among gen z's again because it's quick it's just it's just fun um and it takes a few seconds but i think tiktok was it TikTok? No, it was the, the one uh, that's now, oh, what was it? What was the name? I forgot it. It's not popular anymore. But they started creating uh, news material for teenagers. MySpace, maybe. MySpace? Yes, yes, yes. Um, trying to create a, the, me, uh, the, the news coverage for younger generations in two minutes. So very quick, two minutes, but to keep it fun and light for them. Okay, I'm trying to keep up with time and I have one also very important topic. So please keep up with me. And that is um, events and experiences. You heard it in a video. This is part of public relations that I will define in a moment. But sometimes we say that events uh, are more than just a PR because you have to kind of interact also uh, uh, advertising with a good uh, with a good event, you have to interact personal communication with a good event and so on. However, what we do is we create, we try, we manage events, we organize events, uh, different events such as uh, anniversary, opening a new uh, a place or whatever. But what we want to do is create experience because you will remember my event only if it was memorable experience for you and how do we do that it's not as easy uh we try to engage consume in, engage our visitors or our stakeholders at event uh, and to create their own experience the master in doing so is red bull if you ever visited any event organized by Red Bull, you know that you are part of it. You are just watching it, but you are part of it because they are calling you to, 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 to uh, share it, to photo it, to click on it, to uh, have yourself in it, whatever. So you are part of it and then you are posting, you are, it's, it's experience for you, but you are sharing your experience and making event bigger than it was because all of you become a media for yourself so creating a good event is very creative it's a very good thing uh, so you have to know how to do how to do this um no this is not the slide okay this is the slide so red bull did it so good that uh, this is Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics, and they have created this collage, how many medals their team won, and they beat China and US for heaven's sake and, uh, and Germany. Uh, so this is how important their, their messages and their experience uh, becomes. There is Something also, um, especially in sport events, but I, I was when I was uh, using this example, when I put this example, I was thinking of how it can be actually done very creatively and very efficiently for different environmental campaigns. Uh, and that is called ambush marketing. Ambush marketing means that um, you're just bombing an event, you know, the photo bomb or Zoom bomb. Uh, there is someone else that is paying for the event, but you came and you are now diva and everyone is talking about you. That is 
in bush marketing. Uh, there were great examples of, of uh, sports sportsmen um, like covering with a flag uh, the main uh, sponsor of the event or uh, there was uh, Reebok was uh, on both of those um, uh, events uh, sponsors or for example uh, Michael Johnson covered it with with the Nike logo uh, the, the official was Reebok but they covered it with with uh, Nike and Nike overtook it um, as as a main thing that they were talking about. So this is part of the PR, and PR again uh, is to pro to, to uh, provide press coverage, media coverage without paying it directly, and also engage in lobbying. Now lobbying is the uh, brilla. It's not free media, but it's not paying for media directly. So you are not buying media because then it's not a PR. So whenever you see paid marketing or how they uh, tag it, paid paid PR, that's not a PR by uh, by, by definition. Uh, media relations is part of a PR, uh, or more as uh, uh, more widely it's called a publicity. So publicity or media relations would be a part of, of uh, public, public relations. And um, yeah, well, you know, I, we always struggle on, from marketing side, this is all marketing. <laughs> so what we are teaching and what we have learned is publicity and media coverage is part of PR and PR is part of communication mix, and communication mix is part of marketing. I know we always have these debates uh, with, with, with the communication schools and uh, 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 people who teach communications, uh, but from our side, this is all marketing is everything. I was just about uh, to say that's always a debate between us in like in this kind of communication yes, quarrels between yes, the communication yes. marketing quarrels about what public yes. relations are and and who is whom to whom does it belong to? <laughs> yes, yes, I I, I have a history in PR. I have done it uh, both uh, practically and theoretically, and there is always this juggling among between marketing and and PR. Um, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so publicity, editorials paid, but not paid, not paid space, not I paid for it and I can say Malika is the best, you know uh, really well, or maybe even um, uh, more than I know of uh, how to position your uh, article, how to position your coverage in media without um, uh, directly buying buying a media media space, so it's not a media buying. Um, it's uh, it has the it doesn't have a predictable outcome. That's the biggest problem with with publicity, with creating publicity. You have no idea how it will turn out. You can give your best, do your best, but you never know <laughs> until you just open your. Uh, I had many, many personal examples of writing a text and then media twisted upside down. And I read it and think, how in a world did you conclude this from what I said or wrote? So, um, but more, 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 more experience will always lead to, I guess, better results. Uh, however, publicity uh, builds credibility. Publicity is the thing that builds credibility way more than anything else I have said before. So way more than advertising, uh, way more than um, uh, personal selling, direct marketing or sales promotion, the elements that I will just run through in the next uh, three slides. Uh, but uh, publicity uh, is the one that you trust. This is trustworthy source. Sales promotion, so just running through because I have three left, but usually this is something that you will not use in social uh, social marketing or social communication. This sales promotion means incentives. So I give you discounts, I give you um, some extra purchases, I give you extra, um, extra quantities and so on. 
uh, and this is how I push my increase my sales, my uh, persuasion for a short period of time, uh, but it doesn't bring, uh, doesn't build uh, the image, doesn't build uh, the um, long-term relationships. Personal selling is one-on-one -on -one interaction. I sell you something. This is good because I have a feedback right away. I can sense if I'm a good negotiator. I can sense where are you going. I can uh, reassure you. I can answer your questions right away and, and so on. And finally, uh, direct marketing is using the direct channels to reach uh, uh, your audience. That can be email, that can be, um, uh, it, it used to be online media. It still is telemarketing. We still sometimes call, get, receive phone calls from insurance companies or something like that, informing us, asking us to buy something or something that can be very influential in uh, social media marketing. This is a long video that I will not play, but I will tell you it's, it, it lasts for five and a half minutes or almost six. It builds up the story. It builds up the whole story uh, through reliable sources. And that is something that's called infomercials. So it's information and commercial combined together. It gives you uh, more material. It can last up to 30 minutes, uh, but it's really in, it's, um, it, intensive in information. And it gives you and provides you a good knowledge, solid knowledge, However, it's, it, it's, it's long, it's boring. We usually not done, uh, we usually not um, come to the end, but we have come to the end. And uh, with this, I would like you to, to, to contemplate for one minute and to think of the first thing that you have learned now. What is at the top of your mind, the one thing that you can actually uh, share with me or share with us because I spent, is it hour? Is it 60 minutes? So sorry. Uh, even though it flew, it flew by. Uh, so I, I spent my time. Um, and thank you for your, for, for your attention. Uh, if you have questions, I totally did not see them in the chat. So I'm here to answer it. Uh, thank you. Uh, we thank you, Melika, and uh, uh, we I, I followed the chat, and then uh, I, I see that you you also followed some of the questions. Uh, so there are um, there are co some of the comments uh, here um, regarding like communication mix tailor made for certain target audience types. That's something uh, what what colleagues. That's learned. an excellent summary of what we have talked about. Thank you, Natasha. So anyone else? Maybe? Yes, Sandra is also correct. It depends. That's it the depends. best learning point. <laughs> True. So the, the, the good question is, are we leaving a product era of product marketing and enter, uh, entering values market, marketing? That's also directly the, the related to our main topic, environmental communication, I guess. Yes. Yes, we are. Even if we are selling a basic product, we are selling the value. We are selling. If we are selling the table and chair, we are selling the uh, value of being comfortable while working. Or um, uh, it's not a new concept, Gladden. It's definitely not new. Um, a long time ago, I think beginning of the 20th century, Roger Reeves, uh, the owner of Revlon, said, "In our factories, we produce lipstick." But in our stores, we sell hope. Hope that you will be pretty, hope, hope that you will get married, hope, hope that you will be happy and so on. So this is the value that has been there forever. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, you, LinkedIn. <laughs> Build LinkedIn. up your LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you can find me, I will respond. Good. Okay. I guess we are waiting for some more. Okay, uh, so Peja, maybe if you have a comment or question or, or any kind of, you know, addition to this or so. And in the meantime, uh, um, 
I can just, you know, um, then prepare for my part uh, regarding the third assignment. <laughs> and I must say just uh, thank you, Professor Melika, for an inspiring, interactive, transformative and not just informative lecture. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Peja. Thank you very much for this conclusion. Thank you for having me and for inviting me. I wish you all the best uh, with the rest of your assignments and with the rest of your project. And uh, you can reach me. I, I think I have my email on the last slide or something like that. Uh, if you have any need, I will just put it here and you can reach me at any time. <laughs> Other than that, I will leave you to uh, Leila and Peja. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Malika. It was really great uh, uh, listening to your presentation. Uh, and I'm happy that we solved these technical issues at the very beginning. Uh, so that we can, we were able to listen to your your presentation. Um, I will not take too much of your time, um, dear colleagues, because I know it's kind of uh, it's been a long day and it's quite late now. So um, I'll just uh, shortly present the 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 third part of the assignment or the third team assignment. Um, again. It should be put in the same file as the first and the second assignment. Again, you can make corrections in the second assignment in the meantime, and please again do use other font color for the next assignment and corrections. These are like the the, the things we repeat. It was really helpful uh, that we that you you respected these rules at uh, in the second assignment because it helped us. Uh, for to to have a quicker and more um, successful follow up on your corrections and the second phase of your of your assignment. So in the third part of your four part assignment uh, or in the week three, you will need to prepare an action or implementation communication plan in which you will use communication tactics, techniques and tools with the help of which you will convey your already defined key messages to your primary and secondary target public. So now you know who is your primary target public, you know who is your secondary target public. As Malika said, you kind of learned about them and understood they need their needs, their beha behavior and uh, what you expect from them to change and, and in which way. Uh, you already have key messages. Those who actually have slogans rather than key messages will probably think about it more thoroughly and, and kind of adjust to that. So now ask yourself which tactics, techniques and tools should I and can, could I or could we use uh, to convince these people to change their behavior? So it's now about thinking tactically. It's about uh, uh, trying to find the best ways to spread your messages and uh, make them both informative and transformative as we as we learned now in the process. Uh, so basically there is a de de in-depth def uh, description of your assignment on, on uh, um, the platform. I kind of copy paste it uh, from there to, to just make sure that um, all of you are aware of it. So basically determine the timeline of individual communication activities, tools and techniques and determine the expected results of the entire communication action plan to, to cut the story uh, short. Uh, there is an explanation of our grades, what we will take into consideration. And of course, again, in the feedback, we will explain what was if there is going to be a weak point of some of the assignments, we will explain what the weak point is, if there is one, if the, even if the we um, give the best grade to uh, actually uh, assign these specific teams and assignments, then we will of course again say what your strengths were in the uh, in the assignment, so that you can just again learn in the process. Um, 
we stick to the usual rules in the third assignment again, 10,000 characters, including spaces. Um, again, the same file, uh, the deadline Sunday midnight time. Uh, and then uh, again, you will receive general uh, feedback in the following webinar. I'm kind of becoming a feedback person, <laughs> pre-feedback presenter in our webinars, which is a role I took with a a very uh, much uh, joy and because I think I'm learning from your assignments as well and I'm learning from uh, the feedback I received from Peja as well which I'm grateful to both uh, you and, and him in, in the whole process so this uh, way of summing up our remarks helps me to, to grow and learn again. Uh, so basically uh, general feedback will be given again next next week and the individual feedback of course will be given to all of you in written. Feel free please to ask any past, uh, question and clarification in uh, in the next uh, week during the week and we will be happy to, to answer them. Uh, if there are some questions uh, in uh, um, in the meantime, you can use chat, but if there is some, there are some questions you can uh, you you need to ask now, feel free to to ask them, of course, and we will be happy to to share. Um, Peja, I don't know if you have something to to maybe add or to to uh, announce the fourth webinar. This might be a time to do uh, so. Yes, um, <clears throat> due to the uh, scope, please use only one primary and just one uh, just or only one secondary target target audience for uh, for your social marketing uh, plan. Just this. Perfect. I believe I believe that uh, you will also accomplish this uh, uh, assignment perfectly. Yeah, we're really very happy that first of all you find time to do so uh, because we know that you are you know overwhelmed with other activities and and with the webinars and everything. So this is really a great effort from your side, and and, and we really encourage you to continue in the same manner because I think that most of your work and your assignments are, are on a way to become a quite good. Uh, plan of social marketing campaigns and that's really something that's that's valuable and, and we kind of see through it uh, through the whole process that you are managing to apply uh, theoretical things that we are explaining in the webinars into concrete actions which was the whole point and goal of this these assignments so thank you very much for your um, your uh, your dedication to to do all the assignments in the best possible manner, having in mind the the so the, the the whole circumstances. So the question Sandra has is only primary or secondary audience or both separately? Both separately. But uh, one. one primary and one secondary uh, audience. Exactly. So two at least, the two in total. Perfect. So if no, there are no more questions or they don't cross your mind at this very moment, we mm -hmm. will, of course, be available throughout the week on the forum on the platform. And we thank you again for your attention and participation in this webinar tonight. And of course, we'll see you next Tuesday on the fourth webinar in this course. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the week. Uh, all the best and above all, I wish you good night.